Hey everybody, welcome to Tuesday's live demo. I am so glad that you are here. Um, I am gonna be painting a scene from Bellagio, Italy today. And I just wanted to say, first of all, um, if you don't know me, my name is Chris Branley. I am from Keller, Texas. We have had so much rain lately. It's another rainy day today. So this is going on week three, which is kind of unusual for this area. So we've been having some flooding issues, not really around our, our neighborhood or our house or anything, but um, it's just been a lot of gray days for three weeks. <laughs> So as you guys are jumping in, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, I'm from Keller, Texas. I am a full-time professional artist. I love teaching. I teach online courses. I teach overseas and um, all over the United States. So if you are interested in one of my retreats or workshops, those are finally being in planned and in the works again. Things are starting to open up, which is so exciting. I'm so grateful. Um, so just jump on over to my website, chrisbranley.com. And while you're over there, scroll down to the bottom and there you can sign up to get three free lessons. So um, I hope you guys will do that, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. Get the camera moved over in front of our painting here. And let me fix the light because I know there's a little bit of a glare. Let's see, did that help? That's better. Okay. Do you guys feel free to chime in? Anytime you have a question or a comment, let me know where you're from. And I will be trying to look and, and answer your questions while I paint. Okay, so I have started off with my underpainting. Been working on this a little bit today. Um, I like to go ahead and get all of the board covered with a transparent layer and kind of punch in some of those darker values. I do colors, um, sometimes they're similar, but they're a different temperature. Um, they're typically darker than what my top layer is gonna be. Um, sometimes I'll change things up and do things, you know, quite a bit differently. This orangey color back here is obviously kind of an opposite color of the blue. And that's because I don't want the blue in the water to be really strong. I want to mute it down a little bit so it's not so in your face. So, how is everybody doing today? Let me double check here. It looks like I'm frozen on my iPad, so I'm hoping Let's see what we've got here. Okay. There we go. Hey, Donnie, good to see you here. Uh, Jan, glad to see you. Um, I will happily send you rain <laughs> if I could. All right. So I'm using um, a flat brush, and this is just a three-quarter inch Royal Sable Tech or Royal and Long Nickel, and it's just a cheap brush that I got at Michaels. And I'm going to start off by putting some opaque paints kind of back in the background. So I'm going to mix up some sky color. And the day that we were in Bellagio, if you watched last week, I did Menagio. And we often got mixed up on all the names while we were there. Um, my brother and I were in Italy back in 2016. We took a trip together. And we were just laughing because the, all the places that we went to was either rhyming like Bellagio and Menagio or they all started with the same letter, like Venice and Verena and Vernazza and Verona. So it got kind of confusing. All right, so we're just gonna come up here and start laying in some color. And I think I want that to go lighter. So let me just take that on over towards the 
mountains there and then we'll go ahead and make the rest of that a little bit lighter. So has anybody been planning some trips now that things are starting to open up? Let's see, so Donnie is saying, I don't get my darks in in the early stage of a painting. How can the darks in the painting, let's see, it looks very flat and yellow. Um, Donnie, I'm not sure I understand exactly what you're asking. Are you asking how to establish the darks early on? You just really have to go in and punch those colors up by using less medium in that first layer as you're starting to lay those darker values in. So I am just kind of moving around and trying to create different types of strokes and I don't necessarily want to touch my mountains yet because what's going to happen is it's going to pull that purple color into my sky and onto the, the yellow there, which I don't want. So I've used yellow underneath my sky because Indian yellow, it's not a really high staining color. And I'm laying the blues on so that they're not really blending with my undertone. So I don't know if you can see here. Let's see, let me scoop some paint up. So I've got lots of thick paint on my brush. Can y'all see that? And so instead of taking my brush and pushing in and allowing those colors to mix around, instead I'm laying it more flat and allowing the color to offload. And so that way it's not picking up those undertones quite as much. So I do want that yellow to kind of tone the blues down a bit, but I don't want the sky to look green necessarily. And we all know that blue and yellow together make green. Hi, Red. You, Red says, I didn't get any notifications until now and you have nearly finished. Oh no, I haven't. Don't know why I didn't get any notifications. Well, I just, came on live. So what I've done, Red, is I just got my undertones in and I did that off camera. So you are here right at the beginning and now what I'm doing is I'm laying on opaque color over the top. So this is just a, a transparent undertone that I've laid in. Thank you, Red. Red says it looks lovely. I appreciate that. Um, Sometimes the undertones, the underpainting can, can get real messy looking. So um, anyway, I appreciate that red. <laughs> but we got a long way to go here. All right, so I am kind of looking for my larger areas. So I'm gonna start moving down and work on the mountains. So obviously we don't want those to be really magenta. So we're gonna tone those down and start putting in some blue tones. And I'm keeping it fairly kind of grayish. So I'm even, I'm neutralizing my blues just a little bit. So we're going a little more gray. So let's see what this looks like. All right. And I'm good with allowing this color to kind of blend in with my undertone. So I am using oils and those oils underneath are still wet, which is really an advantage because sometimes I want my colors to mix. And I can still go in and kind of manipulate those. So 
So what I like to do is just kind of move around and do different parts of the painting so that I'm not just stuck in one area doing a lot of detail. So I'll just lay these colors in real quickly and they're not refined in the beginning. So as I move along, I'm just pulling all of these colors up together, all these opaque colors. So towards the end, what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll start pulling edges together, um, thickening up paints, starting to refine things. And that's where the painting starts to come alive. So just mixing up my next color for the next painting. So the, the, or the next mountain here, which is closer and a little more intense. So we're gonna see more color in this one. Just kind of darkening this up a bit, changing up the gray so it's starting to look a little more blue-green and a little darker than what we had in the foreground or in the background. So I'm just moving those strokes in all different directions to keep that sense of movement and impressionistic feel. And again, this background is less important than all of this stuff going on here. So I'm just kind of trying to lay these strokes in fairly quickly. The thing that takes a while is getting that paint mixed up really well because you don't want to go up there and have streaky color. So I'm really making sure my paints blend Just kind of working in around some of these foreground objects. And I can always come back and add in more shadows and highlights back in here if needed. But really, since this is kind of a non-important element in the painting, I probably won't do much detail at all. It's off in the distance. We want to create that atmospheric perspective so it's way off in the distance and not drawing too much attention. So it's just kind of a backdrop for what's going on in the foreground. Got to make sure I keep nice thick paint in my mixture. Don't want to be scraping that up off my palette because then I'm not going to have enough paint in my brush to transfer over to the painting. And I'm just getting different um, tones of gray right now, different temperatures. and not wanting to cover every single portion of that color that's peeking through in the background. All right, moving on to the next mountain. So now we're gonna come in a little more green in a little more intense. Uh-oh, so we have the neighbor dog making noise, so that means Tibby's gonna chime in here. Little baby Yorkie Poo, she sounds very scary at times. <laughs> All right, so adding in more color. Tibby, come here. Not much we can do about things going on outside. You know what? I'm happy they're getting to go outside because we have a break in the rain, so. So I'm leaving out those buildings and those details back there. They're not really necessary. 
Tibby, come here. Ah. Right up against that shoreline. So Bellagio is also on Lake Como. We talked about Lake Como a little bit last week. So I was painting another scene from one of the other villages. It's one of my favorite areas of Italy. All right, I'm gonna set this brush aside and I'm gonna move in with a smaller brush. So I'm still not going in with a teeny tiny brush, but um, this one is a size 20 and this one's a Royal Sable Tech. So now what I'm gonna do is come back in here with a similar color to what we had in the sky, only a little bit darker. And I'm toning it down a little bit too. Don't want it to be too blue. Not covering all of that undertone. Just creating a little bit of a glow there. Trying to keep most of my strokes horizontal just because that is a flat area back there. And that might need to have other color or um, highlights maybe in it later, but right now, until I bring everything else up, I'm not gonna really know. So it's best just to put something down and move on to the next section. All right, let's get up here into some of this foreground. So I'm wanting to kind of do some larger spaces and, and kind of some negative space right now. <clears throat> excuse me. So I think we're gonna go ahead and lay, <clears throat> excuse me, lay this little uh, sidewalk in because it's got some similar gray tones to what we've got going on up here, or at least that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use artistic license and kind of bring that color down So I'm mixing up another gray tone, but I think I'm gonna make it a little warmer. So let's just see what happens here. Sometimes I have to mix it and then lay it in and just see what it looks like. I think that's gonna work for now anyway. I like to let some of that other color show so I stop sooner than I think I need to when I'm working on an area. Now these are little steps and they're more in shadow. So we're gonna come in with more of a purpley violet blue, but still neutral. Just kind of lay in these little steps here. I don't want to overemphasize these. Just an indication, something that looks a little different. This kind of continues back. Let's see here. Having to lighten that back up again because I use that darker gray. All right, ready to move on. All right, let's get some color on some of the buildings here. So this undertone you can see is real kind of reddish pink and I'm wanting it to be more of a sherbet, like an orange sherbet cantaloupe. That's something else we were talking about last week is the buildings, especially in this area, remind me of different flavors of gelato. You've got lemon and cantaloupe and watermelon and lime, so fun. All right, let's see here. Thinking about my 
color tone, what I want to do with this. I want to go kind of a pinkish orange. And I'll probably go a little more intense than what we see in the photograph. I can always tone things down a little bit later if I need to. It's not going to mess up the video. There we go. All right, back to our sherbet color here. So this I'm kind of allowing to blend in with those background colors a little bit because towards the top, so this is underneath this little piece of trim, and a lot of times you'll see rust developing and kind of dripping down up under the building, which is a nice authentic feel. see how that's blending and it's allowing other color tones so we have lots of variation going on. So if anybody is interested in doing an online course, I've got a monthly course going on right now. You can join in um, any month and then it just starts from that month for your year. And I am very specific in all the demos. And I tell you all of my colors, what colors I'm mixing together. There's a camera on the palette, so you'll actually see close up how the colors are mixed. And there's a camera close up on the painting. And then you've got your reference photo that you can download. It's all very, very specific and detailed. And as I move this direction, it's kind of coming into shadow. And so we're going to cool that color down just a little bit. I'm wanting to cool it down, but I still want some of that intensity. And notice I'm really not too worried about getting those edges straight at this point. I still have to come back in and put that shutter in. And I can easily come back and do that different ways. I can either take my original color underneath and come back and kind of put that, scrape that back in, straighten those lines, or just go right over the top. So I really don't worry about fudging too much whenever I lay down color because that's where it can start to get kind of muddy if you overwork it. So I'm just kind of coming in between some of these indications. I don't want to necessarily show um, every single piece of wrought iron, but I want to create an indication that there is wrought iron on this little balcony here. So we'll come back and again refine some of that stuff later, but for now just kind of skipping around, putting little marks in, and it just takes layers and layers of building. Let's see, we're going a little bit more intense. Kind of add in some pops of orange. And bringing that down here. Again, little hints. I know that there's just parts of the building where you can see bits and pieces of it. So we're just going to gradually build those slowly. I'm allowing my colors to change and have variety. I think it just makes it fun and interesting. And I don't have to spell out every detail of what's going on. 
that's the great thing about painting and being an artist is you can kind of direct people to where you want your focus to be. So all of this in here, kind of towards the foreground, is not going to be in detail or in really sharp focus. So I want more of my focus to be kind of leading the eye through the buildings and up to this point. So you can see I've added some reds here because I'm going to pop in some really bright flowers on top of that later. And that'll draw the attention back kind of to where that focal point is. All right, just kind of taking an assessment, looking to see where I want to go next. So I've kind of showed you about laying in this building here. So let's just jump to another section because I know we're not going to finish this live. Um, so I'm going to put in some of this tile. I don't necessarily want it to be um, really detailed, but what I am going to do is put in kind of a dark color and I'm looking at the direction of the tile. So all of these lines are actually heading towards a vanishing point somewhere on this horizon line. Okay, all the tops of the windows, all of the roof lines. And um, so same thing with the tiles, they're, they're gonna aim that same direction. So I think we'll pull in maybe some purple and just create a little bit of an indication and then I can pop in some color on top of that so as we come down here these tiles angle down and really that's already dark so there's really not much I need to do there because once I start laying in my lighter orangey terracotta colors um, then I can leave spaces to create little indications of uh, tile separation same with this one, I'm just going to kind of skip along. I'm not using a ruler, I'm not going, you know, doing everything as perfect as I can, just kind of laying that in. These buildings have been there a long time, they're aged, so that kind of helps to aid in the process. We don't have to worry about making everything all straight and perfect with our ruler. And the, the lines don't even have to be the same width because we're going to be overlapping some of that. All right, so let's mix up a terracotta color. And I'm wanting to start with a darker terracotta and then we're gonna build on top of that. So I'm using a, a CAD red light, but I'm mixing in some other cooler tones to create kind of a dirtier terracotta look. All right, so I'm not gonna lay in every tile exactly as you would think a tile layer would put those. Remember, we're not necessarily wanting to draw a lot of attention here. So if I went in and did all kinds of detail it would look really contrite and not realistic. Because when you're looking at a scene in real life, your eye is focusing on one area. You're not looking at every part of the surroundings. So if everything on the painting were in detail, it just doesn't look right. Okay, so I'm starting with the darker tones. Um, typically I would move to another area, but let's go ahead and put in the next highlight. So now I'm coming in with a lighter terracotta color. And this is what's going to start to give them depth. Okay, being careful about my angles. I'm using different directional brush strokes. 
so everything doesn't all look the same. Different sizes. And as I move out, we're gonna go ahead, usually I'll wait until the very end to pop in some highlights, but um, just to kind of give you a little indication of what's gonna start happening when you start putting in highlights, you'll see that those colors really start to stand out. So all in through here, this is gonna end up being a little bit lighter. So just little bits at a time. Okay, we'll come back to this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to another area. Like I said, I don't wanna to get too detailed in one section. All right, the flowers here at the top, these are kind of important. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay those in. Nice bright pink. I was thinking about yellow, but we've got some really lit up leaves that are right there. And actually what I've done is I went into Adobe Photoshop and kind of brought the colors out a little bit more, saturated them a little bit more, because the day that we were there was really overcast, and so we weren't getting a lot of sunlight. So when I'm painting, I love the values of lights and darks and creating those really beautiful highlights. So since I didn't get a chance to get some really great pictures, that's the cool thing about um, going into Photoshop. You can change your pictures up, your reference pictures. All right, and we will come back to that later if necessary. Let's see, I see one thing that I forgot to do, and really there's not a lot of detail back there. So I'm not gonna put those darker purples on top of the roof here, but I am gonna come in just with some terracotta color. So if that were to come up, it's actually higher up. So I took my mountain up a little too low and blocked off some of that roof. So I can always come back and fix that. Okay, to separate this from this, those are looking very similar. So we wanna brighten this up and change color. And I don't necessarily wanna make all the buildings the same as what I see in my photograph. So <clears throat> maybe to balance the pinks out, I'm gonna go with a similar color. Just gonna change it slightly. Make it a little more peachy, but it's gonna be different from this one. And it's gonna kind of mimic what we've got going on there. So, looking at the shapes of these roof lines here, and I've actually left out, there was another structure that was in front of this that I've chosen to leave out. It's not really critical to the painting, And I left a little space under the roof line because I want to put in a shadow. So I'm gonna do that now, just a nice cool shadow. Right up underneath. So I lay those colors next to each other, and then I come back with my dry brush and just start to kind of blend, pull those together. So if you think it was looking funny, that's why. I do that on purpose. back with this roof line again, taking it all the way down. 
So this, we're just leaving a lot of detail off of that one, keeping it simple. Um, I may even push those colors back more with by mixing in some sky color with that later to help create some atmospheric perspective and just to push it back because we don't really want that to be as strong as some of these other colors here because it's further back, it's really not important, and we want to create that sense of distance. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move over to this side and start putting some building colors in over here. I need to add a color to my palette because I'm almost out and it's messy. And we don't want to contaminate the paints and carry those into the painting. All right, so now what I'm wanting to do is come up with some really bright highlights. So I'm going to start with this light color and then we will gradually tone that down. Notice what a big difference that makes though when you start adding in. Let's see, that is going to be part of the shutters. Okay, yeah, I left that little hole out. All right, where's, where else can I place this strong highlight? So I'm looking, this is not as bright, so I don't want to put it there. I think just right on the edge of the building, I'm gonna carry that down just a little further, and then we'll carry the shadow up into that. All right, as far as anything else though, I'm just kind of squinting and looking at my photograph. There's really not another color at this point where I can, or another place where I can use that color. So let's move on. So now we're gonna go a little darker I'm gonna gray it down a bit. Maybe pull in a little purple. Let's see what happens with this. So this is kind of a purpley tone. And I think that works nicely and I can allow that to kind of blend in with my undertone and let that get darker. Same thing over here. This is the same color as this. So I'm just going to take that same and I'm letting some of that green kind of peek through underneath. Let's see, let's go ahead and take that all the way down. I'm kind of skipping around because we've got a little bit of a balcony and we've got some little light fixtures and things. So just moving around, pulling over to this side. And as we come down, this continues, but it starts to cool off and it gets darker. So I'm going to add in more purple tones. Not going too dark yet. And I know I'm going to be placing greenery over the top of that, so it's not too critical for me to get all of this in here exact and right up next to each of these other colors. All right, so again, I'm looking around, seeing where we can continue some of that color. Let's go ahead and bring it down through here. Just little pops of where the building is peeking through, looking to see other places on the painting where this color could be used. And I'm thinking maybe I was originally, if you guys have uh, been in my classes, Anytime we do lanterns, typically I'll light them up even if they're not lit in the picture, in the painting, or the reference photo, sorry. But I don't necessarily want to draw too much attention here. That's not really where I'm wanting my focal point to be. So I'm going to keep this kind of toned down. It's just going to be a little lantern that's not lit it's in the daytime. And we'll just carry that throughout each of these little lanterns little marks. Let's see, there's a hint of one here. All 
All right, looking to see other places where we can make kind of a big difference. Um, I think if we lay in some of these awnings, that's gonna make a big difference. So this kind of purplish color that we were laying in, the gray, the light gray, could work. I don't want it to be put in where the highlights are gonna go. So I'm gonna to start towards the mid-tone. And I'm just gonna let that color underneath kind of blend with what I'm doing. It gets darker towards the top. I'm gonna to look see and see where some of the lighter value is. And as we move down, it does get darker. So I'm just gonna try out a little color here. It's kind of a purplish color, but I've toned it down. And I'm gonna allow that to kind of blend into some of this darker value. Carry it down, let it blend, so it looks like the same awning. I now have to think about how what color that was because I just mixed other colors into my original kind of gray tone. Now I'm having to remix it. We're going to carry that same color over here and do something similar to this awning. It does the same thing. It gets a little darker as we move up towards the top and it kind of gets a little dirtier. Okay, now I wanna take that and kind of pull it down onto this portion as well, just so it looks unified. A little bit of glow there from some light. All right. Coming back over to this side so that we can add in some of the similar color. And if you hear something in the background, that would be my daughter. She's here. She just graduated. And sometimes she forgets when I go live. <laughs> said I was gonna do highlights, so we're gonna get those highlights in now. I'm gonna put a cool highlight instead of a warm highlight because these, even though they are catching light, they're still kind of in shadow. So I don't want it to be really warm and orangey looking. Let's come right in through here and here. Really pop that up. Looking to see, it's not quite as bright on the on this side here. So I'm toning that down just ever so slightly. Kind of letting those colors move around, blend and mix. So I think about directional strokes and how this portion here of the awning is hanging down, whereas these are kind of canopying up. So I think about that with my strokes. And I'm gonna need a little highlight right there to kind of continue that along. This looks a little separated, so we're gonna go ahead and connect to these little areas here. Just 
is creating kind of some dirty creams. And as we move towards the top, it's cooler and darker, a little grayer. And I don't want to take away from the glow. So we're going to put kind of a turquoisey color in there. And then even though we can't really see the shadow being quite as dark down here, I'm going to carry some of that just to create some continuity. So we're taking that down onto the canopy. Sometimes you just kind of have to change things up a little bit from what you see in the picture, just so it makes sense with the rest of the photograph. Taking that similar color over here, putting in the sides of the awning. I'll chime in if you have any comments or questions. Okay, I feel like we need to pop in some of these bright yellows in the building. I think that is going to be fun. So I'm going to jump in and do that. In some really nice bright highlights and that comes just above the awning this here is not going to be as bright as this yellow because the sunlight is coming in this direction so I'm wanting it to hit right in here again we're going to really emphasize this area so I think what I'm going to do is take that color and mix in a little bit of green so I have a nice intense green and since I've already got that color on my brush I'm gonna go ahead and pop in some of these really bright green highlights just on the edges where that light is catching All right, let's go ahead and finish the rest of the building. I can either put another color up here or I could even just take a dry brush and kind of just pull this up into the color. That gives it kind of a gradual change and there's really not much more you have to do. So let's just do that for now. I may come back and add more color, but we'll see. All right, coming back to some of this tile color. So we're gonna pop in, there's not a lot of detail here. I'm just gonna put an indication that those are the ends of those tiles, give it some texture there. And then underneath, I'm actually gonna pull in kind of an orangey glow. Just right underneath, I'm gonna Think about the shape. And use that brush to kind of contour to help create the, the curvature of that. So I lost that bottom edge just a little bit. I'm just going to come back with a nice dark transparent color. And just kind of save that edge, pop that right back in. I'm okay with it not being just straight all the way across just because um, it's nice to have some of this broken up. And I think I'm going to do that with a little bit of blue. Just a 
almost right up underneath there. Nice contrast with our orange. Just popping around. All right, I think once we get some of these other buildings in, it's gonna to start to take shape, so let's do that. Um, I'm not, again, necessarily wanting to do the same colors I see here, but I do want this yellow one in, but I just don't want it to be as bright as what we have. So we're gonna come in and tone that down. So I'm just using complementary colors. So since that's a yellow and I need it toned down, my complement on the opposite of the color wheel is purple. So that's just gonna neutralize it slightly. And I need to go a little brighter. I always just kind of test my stroke once I get it up on the surface, that's better. And I can still go lighter yet if I need to. But for now, we'll just go ahead and get this in. And again, I'm not worried about my edge. I can always fix it when I come in and do this building here. All right, now I wanna put pops of this down here. There's actually lots of shadows and there's lots of little gadgets and maybe like a cafe sign or little window um, shopping, whatever. So I don't wanna just take the yellow all the way down, but I'm gonna come in and put indications, little pops of that yellow, and then we can just kind of fudge it and put in darks and lights. So basically, I don't wanna draw attention here I can't really tell what's going on in the picture. I don't really need to know. I just need to look at the shapes and the values. So darks and lights, little rectangular shapes, that's just gonna indicate, um, it could be windows, it could be little decorative features, signs, whatever. It doesn't really matter. All right, let's move over to this building. So, I want to keep it in the warm family and I think we'll go, I think I will go ahead and do a, a similar color as to what I see there. So we're going to do kind of a pinkish orange, similar to what we've got going on here. We'll just keep it simple, kind of keep it unified. We might change this one. All right, so I'm testing it out and I'm gonna lay this in and then I think I'm gonna lighten it. Again, just skipping around. I've got shadows under the balcony so I don't wanna cover too much of that with this color. As it comes down, it does get a little darker and I'm okay with it dirtying up because you know, it may have rained and just over the years that dirt and stuff just gets built up in there. So I just kind of let it happen, let it do its thing. You don't have to indicate every single window and every awning and every balcony. We can just put little hints of colors and shapes, again, values. All right, let's pop in a little bit of highlighting in there. Just building it up a little at a time. Okay, we're gonna come down here and create a dirtier, darker value. And I'm gonna start, I need to darken that shadow with a transparent color to start with. So right up underneath, we're just gonna intensify that and kind of darken it. Just pull that down into our color.
Okay, and now I'm going to create just hints of this wrought iron. And actually a lot of this is covered up with foliage. So I'm going to go ahead and pop in some greens there. Going with kind of a mid-tone green and then we'll build the highlights on top of that. I've already kind of laid in some of the darker greens with that undertone. Just taking it a little lower than the balcony just to give that kind of cascading effect. Directional lines. And while I've got green on the brush, let's just go ahead and start putting in some of this greenery. So we'll start with our mid-tones again and later we'll pop in those highlights. So I'm overlapping some of these darks. So I laid in some really dark values because I know that it's gonna be a good support for these other greens that are gonna come in on top. That's what helps to create that sense of depth. up those strokes. I'm not looking for leaf shapes. I'm just looking for mass value and mass color. Coming in a little darker. so that we can go in underneath here. So it's lighter than that dark value, but it's a little darker than these other greens here. These are gonna be more in shadow. So I wanna take that into account. Okay, this is another type of plant there, so I'm not going to come too far over into that section. And although the flowers in here are red, I don't necessarily want to make those red. Um, I kind of want to keep this not so much of a focal point. So I put some purples and magentas down and I can come back in, I can either add red or I can add some purple tones. And I think I probably will end up doing purples. Okay, so again, my opaque color is just coming in over the top here, of these translucent colors, just starting to build. And we're gonna come in with a cooler green now. Making sure I get it mixed thoroughly. So this is a cooler, more minty green. And we're just gonna start popping this in as some of the highlight. It's in the cooler shadowed area. So it's not gonna be real warm. As we move over this way, it gets cooler. So I'm just bringing in more blue tones into those greens. Kind of allowing no 
is to start building on top of those darker values. And I want to make sure I leave little peak holes for those buildings and things that are behind. That's just gonna make it more airy and fun and loose. Otherwise it just ends up getting too tight. Playing those cool and warm temperatures off of each other. And then breaking up some of these other warmer colors. And we're going to pop in a few more highlights here. Not my brightest highlight, but just something to start giving this some depth. trying to make it organic and flowy and kind of have it coming up overlapping some of this building. So just the very top of that is actually catching light. Few little hints of highlights down below. In here again, they cool. So I don't want to use my warm highlight there. All right, let's pop in a little more here, just kind of break this up a little bit, create a little continuity. Don't want to come in too far again. These stay kind of cool, but we still need to have continuity. So I'm going to go back in with a little bit more of a mid-tone, a little darker. So I'm taking my green and neutralizing it with a little bit of red. Just creating little pops of interest in here. Just something to kind of break these little shapes up. And I'm looking at the level. So we have a level of plants here. And then we have another little growth right here. So it's almost like I'm building little shelves. And then another one here. I'm not missing y'all's questions. I haven't been scrolling there. I see we've got some more people who've joined in. Welcome, guys. I'm just kind of building my color slowly by slowly. All right, let's lay this awning in. I kind of like the bluer tone versus the green. Um, and since we're gonna be putting some greenery down on here, I think we're gonna keep it more of a blue tone, kind of a blue turquoisey color. So let me go ahead and get that mixed up. So I want it to be a little different than what we see there, so I'm going a little warmer by adding in some phthalo green and lighter. And leaving spaces, because I know I'm gonna be putting little leaves and things up over that. So just kind of pulling that up sporadically here and there. 
making sure we get this angle in correctly. Yeah, I like that color. And I think we're gonna do the same thing over here. Even though, let's see, this one, this is part of the balcony. This one is red and white striped, but I think we're gonna go ahead and do a turquoise color here, only I'm gonna make it lighter. And a little lighter. So it's getting a little sunlight coming down. All right, looking to see where else we can place this color. I think, so this is a little bit lighter value than the water back there. So I think we're gonna put a little of this back here and kind of bring the eye back. Yeah. I think that works better. And that little line there, I'm gonna fix that later. I'll have to get right up in front of it and I don't wanna block your view. But it's important that your horizon line from the mountains to the water is straight and so I'll probably come back and blend that in a little bit let's just soften that because it is back in the distance just creating some variation back there softening pushing that back Probably does need to be a little lighter. This is all the stuff I typically do towards the end. I'm just doing a little bit now just to kind of give you an idea of my painting style. All right, coming back down in through here, I'm going to add some darker tile. So all in through here. As it pulls out, it starts to get a little brighter, but it's not quite as bright as the front. So you can always pop little highlights in later there where we need those. Kind of bring attention to that section. And take those edges and let those kind of work into the background so everything doesn't look so separated. And I think, even though we can't see it in the photograph, we're gonna bump that up even brighter. And I'm just kind of dirtying my orange up a little bit because I don't want it to be really orange. But it's catching light. So again, I'm using my artistic license. The day was kind of cloudy and hazy, but we popped up colors in the photograph in Adobe Photoshop to create some highlights. And I'm just gonna really strengthen Some of those highlights in there so that edge is really catching especially this corner you know you have to kind of really be observant when you're out and about and pay attention to light how colors bounce around colors that you'll see in shadows all of those things are important right in there we'll just pop that up
And all that's kind of pointing in and drawing our eye into this section here. So eventually, and I'm just gonna do this now to show you, I'm gonna come in with some really bright, light highlights. And those are gonna get popped in right along these edges. You see how bright those are? So that's what we'll do towards the end, is really start pulling out those brightest highlights. And that's what starts really pulling the painting together. All right, and I have just realized I've gone over an hour. I can't believe it's gone by so fast. Um, just gonna put in a little bit more greenery over here. But we've got a long way to go on this painting. I am gonna work on this and then I will post it. Um, I'll put it on my Facebook page and on my website. But, anyway, I certainly appreciate you guys watching today. And um, again, if you haven't done so, hop over to my website Chris Branley Art, and you can get three free lessons. If you just scroll down to the bottom, you can sign up and get those three lessons. And um, also check out my retreats and workshops that are coming up. Love to have you guys. And um, anyway, I hope you're enjoying your day, and I so appreciate you watching. If um, you haven't done so already, if you wouldn't mind sharing the video, that really helps me out and helps um, other artists to be able to see these free demos. So um, I appreciate any shares and you guys take care and I will see you next week.